Mixing skincare is a super hot topic right now and probably one of the most frequently asked questions I get on social media. But it's more complicated than just layering on products on top of each other. In today's video, I have to give you some basic rules that you can follow, especially if you're new to skincare and don't know where to start, along with some do's and don'ts. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel here, I love to talk about all things skin and skincare related. Now, when it comes to mixing ingredients, here are a few things to keep in mind. Number one, probably the most important thing is to avoid ingredients that will cancel each other out. And really, there are only a few that will not work well together. Two, the most common reason is that ingredients when you use together will increase the irritancy and lead to inflammation, which is not ideal, especially when you're trying to treat particular concerns like acne and hyperpigmentation. Three is just the cosmetic elegant. Certain formulations like oil and water-based formulations may not work well together that can cause skincare product killing, which basically is the formation of balls of products on your skin. Now, when it comes to avoiding certain ingredients, everybody's skin is different. And so when I get asked on my social media, can I use this ingredient with that? It's really hard for me to respond to yes or no, because it really depends on your skin. It's a matter of you trying it out and see how well your skin responds. Now, let's talk about some of the things that you should absolutely avoid because these ingredients will just cancel each other out. The most common is really benzoyl peroxide with retinoids as well as hydroquinone and vitamin C. So benzoyl peroxide with the exception of adapalene, which is a third generation topical retinoid, it really cancels many active ingredients out because of how benzoyl peroxide works. Benzoyl peroxide is one of my favorite acne fighting ingredients is anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial. The way it works is it generates oxidation by interacting with proteins on your skin. Because of that, retinoids, vitamin C, as well as lightening agents like hydroquinone, they can become easily oxidized. So therefore you want to avoid benzoyl peroxide with those ingredients. Now here, I'm mostly speaking to leave on benzoyl peroxide products. Theoretically, you can use a benzoyl peroxide cleanser followed by those ingredients. Some dermatologists argue that you want to just avoid them altogether, even if it's in a cleanser form. I personally use prescription tretinoin after a benzoyl peroxide cleanser and still find it to be efficacious. Benzoyl peroxide has also been shown to oxidize hydroquinone, which is also fairly unstable and it's used as a lightening agent to treat hyperpigmentation. So another mixing that is really an absolute no-no is mixing sunscreen with another sunscreen or mixing sunscreen with your moisturizer or makeup. Sunscreen, to get that adequate SPF, you literally have to use a tablespoon amount for your head and neck to get the adequate protection, which we know majority of people don't. When you're mixing two formulations of sunscreen, even if it's from the same brand, because the formulations are going to be different, you're essentially diluting your sunscreen. Same thing goes when you're mixing your sunscreen with moisturizers or with your makeup. What you can do and should do is layer your sunscreen. So apply an adequate amount of one, let that absorb, and then layer another one, whether it's the same one or a different one on top of that. That is absolutely fine. But even with that, remember SPFs are not additive. Layering SPF of 30 on top of 30 does not give you SPF 60. Now we can't talk about mixing ingredients without addressing the vitamin C and niacinamide misconception that has propagated on social media. So the answer is yes, you can use vitamin C and niacinamide together. This confusion really stemmed from a study that was done back in the 1960s where where they used unstable forms of vitamin C and niacinamide and heated both ingredients up to very high temperatures. And what they found was a complex that was formed between ascorbic acid, vitamin C, and niacinamide that caused basically the formation of nicotinic acid as well as yellowing of the solution, which was thought to basically deactivate a vitamin C. Nowadays, we have number one, way better stable forms of vitamin C. And two, for that reaction to happen, you look have to use extreme temperatures much hotter than what we normally experience when we are storing our products at room temperature or putting it on our skin. And so yes, vitamin C and niacinamide is very safe to layer on top of each other and mix together. So now let's talk about ingredients that you probably want to avoid mixing due to the increased irritancy. Number one is topical retinoid with any exfoliating acid. 
acid. Although the two together is really giving you a synergistic benefit, when you are using the two together in the same routine, it can really increase the air intensity. I am mostly speaking to when you are layering like your retinoid on top of a alpha hydroxy acid, that significantly increases the irritation. Products are formulated with a retinoid and an AHA together in the same product. Often those are better tolerated and can be used. But nevertheless, if you're sensitive skin, I definitely would not go buy a product with those two and use it on your skin. Now, having said that, some people can tolerate using a retinoid and an AHA together. It just really depends on what you've used on your skin before, how well you tolerate these ingredients. The next ingredient pair that you probably want to avoid using together is vitamin C and alpha hydroxy acids. Double the acid means double the irritation. Some people can handle it. I personally cannot. So if you can, then go ahead. The alpha hydroxy acid may even enhance the penetration or the you know, of your vitamin C. But again, most people cannot tolerate that combination, so I do not recommend. Now, just like avoiding AHAs with retinol, you probably do not want to use l, -L ascorbic acid serum together with your retinol because of the heightened irritancy. l ascorbic acid in a liquid serum often is formulated in a lower pH, and so that's just gonna add and further add to the irritation that you're already experiencing from your topical retinoid. All of this is just kind of recommendations. They're not gonna cancel each other out, and so if if you're able to tolerate, by all means, go ahead. But for most people, that's an issue because most of us tend to use vitamin C as an antioxidant in the morning and our retinoids at night. So those are kind of general rules of thumb when it comes to mixing ingredients of don'ts. And so when it comes to using all these great active ingredients, I do recommend instead of playing chemists at home, is just go ahead and pick out a product that have these formulated together. Chances are, if you look at the back and the ingredient list of some of your favorite products, they probably will have these ingredients already present together. So when they're formulated together, you're getting the synergistic benefits, but less of the irritancy. But as always, remember to test them on your skin first before using all of your face because it can still be irritating for some. Now, if you enjoy content like this, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Comment below with your favorite ingredient pairing. I would love to know. And then as always, you can find more information on my social media at derm.talk on my Instagram. Until next time, talk to you guys later.